Hello and welcome to a special after midnight edition of Nathan Builds Robots. Today we're going to be looking at the FL Sun S1 and T1, which have just been announced. I've got the full spec sheet and we're going to go over everything. Now it says they're sold out right now, but they're going to go on sale like when I publish this video. So I'll put links in the description to where you can check it out. But let's start by just checking out this video that they posted on Twitter. Okay, and here's the crazy thing. Look at this benchy speed, 8 minutes and 40 seconds. So, you know, the 15 minute benchy has been a, a benchmark of sorts for quite some time. But they're going under 9 minutes here, so almost twice as fast. So we've got the FL Sun S1, which is going to be the higher end model, and then the smaller T1, which is still going to be insanely fast. The T1 is going to be extremely affordable, $500, and the S1 is going to be like the ultra high end model that's going to be even faster have higher print temperatures, a larger build volume, just, you know, an all-around nicer model. I don't see the reason to buy a V400 at this point, because with the T1 being even cheaper than the V400 um, and much faster, this is going to be the smart one to buy. And if you're one of the first three people to buy one of these, you're going to get like a 50% discount or something crazy. So as soon as you see this video, uh, as long as you watch it within like an hour of it launching, props to the notification squad that shows up early. Yeah, make sure to subscribe and click that bell button if you want to get these videos in a timely manner. So let's start with the T1, which is the lower end model for $500. Apparently, like every 10th order is going to get a free complimentary apron as a special gift. I don't know if this is going to be like a Nero style apron or if it's going to be something you can work in the kitchen with. But anyways, let's get to the specs. 1,000 millimeters per second maximum speed. So that's a meter per second. Absolutely crazy. 20,000 millimeters per second squared acceleration, which is like kind of on par with the fastest Core XY machines right now. At least, you know, like the ones from Bamboo Lab and Creality and whatnot. Supports a bunch of materials, fully enclosed auto bed leveling and vibration compensation, which is basically necessary for a printer at this speed and cameras for time-lapse photography and remote monitoring. Again, this says sold out, but you know, as soon as this video goes live, the sale should be starting. If you're, you know, within the first couple minutes, just mash the refresh button until this goes on sale and you'll be able to get that 50% off price locked in. That'll be $250. That's like an insane deal for this thing. Okay, well, down here it's saying 30,000 millimeters per second squared acceleration, which is you know, a little bit faster than it was saying up here. Flow rate is 90 millimeters cubed per second, which means they're using some kind of crazy high flow hot end. Here you can see the packaging of everything. Even this lower end model uses this CPAP style turbo fan that basically removes the fan from the print head. And it just routes this tube of compressed air out to the print head. And it basically reduces the weight. High powered stepper motors, all metal frame, max nozzle temperature is 300 degrees Celsius dual gear direct drive, you know, this is all stuff that we expect to see. But, you know, it's nice to see that they're including a relatively high temperature hot end that has an insane flow rate there. Just icing on the cake, they've got a HEPA, an activated carbon filter up top. Off to the side, they've got a camera. And here's the extruder. If you really want to get into the details, you can see exactly how this thing is built. Looks like they're using a lightweight stepper motor and a filament detector, so you know, all those quality of life features, some environmental protection, I guess. Okay, so here's the build volume, 260 millimeters in diameter by 330 millimeters tall. And uh, it kind of has this V shape up at the top or this cone shape. I assume the 330 millimeters is like the very tip top there. And then the full cylindrical build volume might be like 300 millimeters. We'll have to wait and see on that. But it's fully enclosed, so you'll be able to print stuff like ABS and ASA. And also your PTG and PLA prints might turn out with higher print quality thanks to that enclosure. So this machine's only going to be 16.8 kilograms, which is about 40 pounds. So you should be able to pick it up. And if you don't, you need to start hitting the gym. Brass nozzle, 300 Celsius. It says the rated power is 450 watts. So the fact that they're only providing one power rating here indicates that this probably uses a DC heated bed. Looks like it's got some internal storage, and then I'm sure you can put an SD card or flash drive in there to expand that. Yeah, you know, crazy good printer for the price, $500. I mean, for that price, you could either get this or a Bamboo Lab P1P, and I think the choice here is obvious. This one's just got a lot better features for the price. 
Now here's the FL Sun S1, which is gonna be like their flagship printer. It's kind of unfortunate that they named it S1 because Creality calls a lot of their printers S1 models. $1,300, I guess that full MSRP is gonna be $1,500. When you see the specs on this machine, you'll understand why. 1,200 millimeters per second maximum speed. I mean, just to put that in context, um, the Bamboo Lab machines advertise a 500 millimeters per second max speed, so this is over twice as fast. The acceleration is 40,000 millimeters per second squared. So again, that's twice as high of acceleration rates as a Bamboo Lab printer. The build volume is even bigger than the previous model, so 320 by 320 by 430. And that's a cylindrical build volume as well. All right, and they've got a small LiDAR thing. They're calling it a radar, but I think it's just one of those laser scanners to inspect the first layer quality. All metal hot end. This one can go all the way up to 350 Celsius, so even higher than the previous model, the T1. And the flow rate is 110 millimeters cubed per second, which is absolutely crazy. I really want to test this out and see how true those claims are. I mean, I've got printers going up to 75 cubic millimeters per second with kind of questionable quality. The fastest ones that I've got to print reliably is 35 cubic millimeters per second, which is like a third the speed. So basically this will be able to print three times faster than my fastest printer. And to keep up with that massive flow of filament, you're gonna need excellent part cooling, which is why they've upgraded to that CPAP style part cooling. So here's the cooling fan, it says it goes up to 40,000 RPM. So, you know, this might be a kind of a loud machine. Minimum cooldown for a single layer, one second. So one second per layer, that's kind of insane. Oh, whoa, they've got closed loop motor control. That's pretty crazy. It's got an all metal frame, 80 watt ceramic heating element, dual gear direct drive extruder, high flow hot end design, max nozzle temperature 350 degrees Celsius, ultra lightweight. I mean, these are just insane specs. So it's got some AI assisted uh, bed leveling and first layer inspection and auto calibration. So, you know, basically just copying the features that the X1C brought to the market. It really seems like they looked at the X1C and used it as a benchmark and they're like, okay, how can we do better than that? So double the print speed, triple the acceleration, whatever they need to do to be able to get this machine to perform better than that machine so they can justify selling this printer at a high price tag. Yeah, this one also saves the environment, very good. All right, so it's got a filament dry box built into the top of the printer. So, you know, your carbon fiber nylons and stuff will be able to go up there and you'll be able to keep them relatively dry. And then this one, since it's got a larger build volume, it has a smart zone heating element, so you can heat just the middle for smaller models. Let's say you wanna make a really fast prototype of a small object that you're working on, you can just heat up the middle, or you can heat both up. Again, the build volume is kinda of like the cylindrical build volume with a cone on top. Okay, this one has a status indicator light. I assume that's to tell you what's going on with the print job, like it probably like steps up as the printer is getting finished, and with how fast this thing prints, that'll probably be stepping up pretty fast. And then there's FL Sun OS. I'm not sure if that's a version of Clipper or whatever. Nice little touchscreen interface there. Then you got two USB ports and a power button. All right, so let's look at the spec sheet for this S1 printer. Looks like this one weighs 36 kilograms, so that's like roughly 90 pounds. It's gonna be an extremely heavy printer. This one has a hardened steel nozzle, so it'll be more suitable for carbon fiber reinforced filaments. It's got 36 volt closed loop stepper motors, which is a big deal. I mean, most stepper motors for 3D printers run at 12 or 24 volts. This one's stepping it up to 36 volts to unlock those higher speeds. The bed temp goes up to 120. Max nozzle temp is 350, so it unlocks even more higher temperature engineering grade filaments. So you can do polycarbonate and other things. Very cool. It has a separate heating element for the dryer up top. It's got a turbofan CPAP style cooler, which again is like that uh, that fan that like is remotely located on the machine and then it runs a tube out to the hot end, which basically means you don't have to attach that fan to the hot end, which makes it so you can make it as light as possible. Max speed and acceleration, very fast. The power consumption varies based on continent, so that's probably telling me that they're using an AC heated bed. Up to 1300 watts of power draw in a 220 volt country or 600 in a 110 volt country. Quad core processor, so you know, it should be pretty quick and snappy for starting print jobs and that kind of thing, sending files over the network. It's got a full HD display, which is pretty nice. And here's a bunch of random features that they support with different sensors. 
so that's your first look at the FL Sun S1 and T1. Definitely check it out if you're interested in getting one of these on pre-sale. I'll leave links in the description below. But yeah, that's about it. I just wanted to get this video out. There's two hours before you, uh, you can buy one of these. I'm going to edit this and upload it in maybe one hour. So really hop on that deal if you're one of the first people to watch this video. And uh, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I'll see you in the next episode.